terms with various powers. Simplify the following. So we look for terms that are what we call like. These two are like because they're both p squared. These are like because they're both q. And these are like because they are p. So let's click the like terms. We've got 8p squared. We've got 12q plus 12q. And we've got minus 3p minus 8p minus 11p altogether. Right, now it doesn't matter what goes first. So we might as well start with the s's. There's 5, 11, take away 7, so there's plus 4 s's. There's minus 6 t cubed plus 9 t cubed, so that could be plus 3 t cubed. There's plus 5 t squared, another 5 t squared there, so that's plus 10 t squared, and a minus 5 t. Now it doesn't matter which way around the letters go, uv is the same as vu. So that's 6, 14, take away 4, so that's 10 uv. Minus 7v squared, plus 7v squared, they cancel each other out. Minus 9u cubed, minus 12u cubed, minus 21u cubed. Right, let's see what we've got on this one. 12a cubed six b squared another two which makes me eight b squared minus b cubed minus seven b cubed that's minus eight b cubed altogether and there's a seven a squared there plus 7, 8 squared. Collecting together like terms. Expanding single brackets. If you see a number or anything outside a bracket, it means multiply everything inside by what's outside. So we go 4 times x, 4 times plus 7. 3a times a, 3a times minus 7. 4xy times x, 4xy times y, 5st times 3s, 5 3s are 15, the s times the s will give me s squared, 5st times minus, uh, 5 2s are 10s, t squared, 4a, 4 5s are 20, 4ab, 4a multiplied by this, 4 times that is minus 32, a times a squared is a cubed. Expanding brackets multiply anything inside by what's outside. Now the opposite process to that is called factorising. So if we look at these two terms, we see that 5 goes into 10 and 5 goes into 15. So we take that out, that's called the common factor and then write inside the brackets. Now we can always check these by doing what I did on the previous sheet. 5 times 2a is 10a, 5 times 3b is 15b. It takes seconds to check it back again. So what have we got here as a common factor? We've got 2 goes into 4 and 2 goes into 6. We've got b goes into this expression and b goes into this expression. So that is the common factor which will leave me with 2a there and minus 3 there. Check it. That multiplied by that is that. That multiplied by that is that. What we've got here? Common factor of 3. A. Common factor of 3a. So leave me with 3b there and 2 there. Check. It works back. What we've got? 7 is a common factor for the numbers. And t. So that'll leave me with 2 st there and 
3 there. There's no number that's common here, but ST is a common term. Then with 4, T squared. Just check that that multiplied by that gives you that. And 5, S. Just check that that multiplied by that gives you that. Factorising. Solving equations by trial and improvement. So this is one of the few times that you actually guess in maths. At least you guess to start with. And you say, let's try x equals 3. And then we get 3 squared, which will give us 9, plus 3, which will give us 12. Not very good, so then we say try x equals 4. And it's very important you write all this down. All will show you working out, but even more so in this, you'll get nothing if you don't show you working out for a question like this. So let's try x equals 4. 4 squared is 16, plus x, which means plus 4. x squared plus x is 20, when x is 4. Try x equals 5. x squared will be 5, 5 is 25, plus x, which will be 5, which will give me 30. So therefore it must be somewhere between these two, so we now try x equals 4.5. And yes, we are expected to then use the calculator. So we've got 4.5 squared as x squared plus the value of x, which is plus 4.5. And this time you can write down the working out in there, but you most definitely must write that part down. A little bit more than that. So let's say try x equals 4.6. 4.6 squared plus the x value of 4.6 equals. And that's just a little bit too much. Is it? No, we want to be 26, don't we? So it's going to be a bit more than that. So let's try x equals 4.65. 4.65 squared plus 4. 0.65 equals and that's gone too much because I want the answer to be 26 so therefore it's bigger than that but smaller than that therefore the answer is that to one decimal place make sure you write down the answer I've seen it so often people show some beautiful working out and then don't actually write down the answer that would be silly, wouldn't it? Understanding the gradient on a distance time graph. So we're here we've got a graph that shows distance in miles, time in hours. And the gradient means how steep. So let's look at going from A to B. A to B takes two hours and covers four miles. So in one hour it would be two miles, therefore it must be two miles per hour. Now let's look at going from B to C. B to C takes two four hours and covers two miles. So in one hour it would be half a mile. So if in one hour it's half a mile, it must be half a mile per hour. That's the speed. Now let's look at C to D. C to D takes two four hours to do two four miles. So in other words, it's one mile in each hour. In fact, this is the gradient of the lines. The gradient of this line is this value, which is 4, over this value, which is 2. The gradient of this line is this value, which is 2, over this value, which is 4. The gradient of this line, the gradient is this value, over this value which is 4 over 4, which gives you a gradient of 1. So in fact, the gradient 
on a distance time graph works out speed. 